All right, so let me show you my idea here. Um, it kind of started, this is my grandmother's little pin cushion and it's so beautiful. And inside she kept pins and buttons and I haven't touched this, that's all of her, this is mine, but those are all of hers. So um, I love using that. So that's what's here today. And so what I have here is I um, kind of got the idea. I have these little vintage gardening tags and I love that there is, I can feel the texture. And I, I gave someone a gift and I used one of the, these to kind of embellish the gift because I love that part of kind of thinking of different ways to make the gift itself very beautiful. So it's special. So um, I created these little tags. I sat and binge watch a show with Mark on Netflix. And these are made out of canvas. I have some raw canvas. If you don't have raw canvas, I, that's why I put this down. This is a drop cloth that I got from Ace Hardware. And here's a piece cut off and you can just cut it and trim it up and use that and it looks just the same. And I got this for like $9. So you can do a lot with the um, drop cloth at, in place of the canvas. So I'm gonna show you how I did that, but I, I'm making tags and I'm writing in script and then just doing a back stitch, which I'll demonstrate that. I am not a master at embroidery. Olivia is quite good at it, but I'm not so much. But I like that it's a little wonky. And so I just took some um, like parts of lyrics from holiday songs and that came to mind and um, you could use parts of a prayer, um, so anything that you want. So I wanted those to be in print and the, the names to be. So I'm gonna put those off to the side for right now. And, and I just kind of tucked it into the package, which I think looks really pretty. All right, so let me move these things. Now, this is kind of how my idea formulated. Um, I wanted to paint the tags and I um, also wanted to make these bookmarks for the books I give. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of get started with this idea. So I, let me get some paint out here and I wanted to keep it in a limited color palette. And I have this beat up piece and it's really good paper that was cut apart. That's what this is made out of. So I've already made one so I can show you this part. And it's a piece of um, Arches watercolor paper that is 300 pound. And it just got messy. It must've got cast aside, I don't know. Usually I take really good care of my good paper. So I don't know why this piece, but I saved it because I knew I could use it. Um, I have put a coat of clear gesso since it's watercolor paper and I'm using acrylic paints. All right, so I'm gonna just put it right here I think I'm gonna go this way. And I wanted this to be a simple um, little landscape, if you will. So I'm gonna just take out my the paint colors I used. I have olive green. Can you see this? Let me just put, I'm not using too much of it. It's just a little bit there. And <clears throat> the um, other olive green that I had. And then I found in my stash a paint color I haven't used very much. It's ash blue, and it's a little bright for what I want to do with this, but I'm going to mute it down. And let's see, I have some gray. I'll put that down here. And I'm looking for my favorite palette knife and I don't see it. Here it is, okay. And I have a little bit of Payne's Gray that I'm just gonna put off to the side here. I think I need that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is um, mix up my blue so I have it. And I have some, off to the side, some clear gesso because I want it to be matte. I, but you can choose what you want. You could do this in gouache, you could do this in watercolor, whatever you wanted. But I wanted this to be matte. Um, I like how it feels. And I have some white gesso as well. All right, so let me just put, pour that on there. And I'm gonna mix up this light blue first before I start painting. So I. Don't have to stop. Let me see everything. All 
So I'm gonna take a speck. Now you can mix black and white. I just happen to have this gray here. Wait, I'm gonna pull some out. That over there. gray out. There we go. Okay, there. That's pretty good. So now I'm going to put a little clear gesso here and get my water. And I'm going to start with this bigger brush here. And I also have a couple of palette knives in my trusty color shaper. And I am not taping this down because I don't want a white edge. That's another reason I'm using my drop cloth um, because I'm going to go off the edge and it's going to be a little bit messy, but that's okay. So I'm going to start with this olive green and I'm just going to create the base the bottom of the landscape. And I've decided um, uh, not to add any other colors to this, but you could if you wanted to add, you know, the, the kind of pinks or burnt siennas to it or whatever the color palette is that you have that you like to work with. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna push it around a little bit. And now I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the gray blue and just get some kind of scrubbing it in it first, scrubbing it in it first. going to work my way up and I need a little bit more white. You can make your white go a little further by adding the white gesso to it and I'm using this um, titanium white by Nova and my friend Andrea uses it all the time and it has a little bit more of a matte finish to it. And I told you, you know, Millie's shedding. So <laughs> everywhere I look, there's like a little dog hair somewhere, a little gift for me. So I am just kind of doing this loose little brush stroke here. And then I'll kind of go back in and push it around. in some of the lighter blue in places. So I'm kind of making this gradient going upwards. I'm playing with the paint. Maybe go in and get a little more green. trying to get a little bit of movement in it. blobs on here too because when you cut this apart it'll you'll see that in the the little mini landscape bookmarks you could also create a collage because all we're gonna do is just cut this apart 
after it dries. And I, I gave it a good couple of hours because I have a lot of paint on here. My gesso in there. Millie's being very good. She's sleeping on the carpet right in front of me. I'm so proud of her. It's supposed to snow here, I think, this weekend. I'm not quite ready for that. That means it's fall will definitely be over. We've had a very late fall, it was very warm for a long time, so our trees didn't, the colors didn't really change until mid-October, and usually everything is gone by November 1st. So it's been really beautiful having, I feel like, I don't know what's going on with my camera. I feel like it's not, maybe it's Facebook, I don't know. It looks a little blurry, but. Hopefully you can see everything okay. All right, so now I have everything where I want it. And I'm just gonna put a little bit more white in here, just to add a little bit of this gesso in to some of the spots. And I think I want to go a little deeper get some of this green here, mixing it with the Payne's gray and just kind of putting a little darker value down here. But then I have this really pretty olive green that I'm gonna leave alone. No, <laughs> I did my white down there. Stop, fix it Renee, all right. Take a little bit of this olive, push it in there. Okay, so now we're gonna make it snow, my friends. Are you ready? So I'm gonna get my brush very clean, as clean as possible here. And then I have this white gesso and I'm just going to really water it down and make it snow. Okay. So that has to dry um, and I'm gonna put it aside and I'm gonna show you how I did the rest of it. So let me put it over here. It's pretty so I can make some more bookmarks. All right. But before we do that, before I put all this away and it dries out, I wanna share with you how I did this. So I'm going to take couple of these tags. Now, I discovered something. I'm gonna take out the string, okay? Because my string got all filled with, you know, glommed up with paint as I was experimenting. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little piece of tape and just tape this corner down and I'll show you why. So you could, you know, put this on a, you know, on a piece of cardboard or something and then do a lot of them in a row. So then I have a smaller piece of tape and I'm going to just put it under here to anchor it because I want it to go off the edge. I want it to bleed off the edge. But, and I don't know if it's going to happen this time, but see what happened because it was just moving all around, even though I really like it. But now I can't really use that one because it's so messy on the back. So now I'm going to do the exact same technique and bring in a little green here, a little green. And it's kind of fun because I'm right on the drop cloth and I can go right off the edge. And let's get a little olive. scratches in there. I think I need some more paint. Okay. 
Now I'm gonna add the gray blue. I'm gonna do the same way. So it always comes out different, everyone. But I think that's a good thing. All right, let's get some of the lighter blue. I want it to kind of go up the, at an angle there. I like what's happening there. Um, Now this is something that you can do if you have kids or grandkids, you can do this with them because just tape it down and let them put paint everywhere and they will be so excited about making their gift tags. Okay. That didn't work. That happens sometimes. They don't like it. Oh, I didn't mean <laughs> I went crazy. I went after that one. That's not what I meant to do. I was getting caught up. All right. just works best with your fingers, doesn't it? Especially on a little surface. Okay. All right, now you know what time it is, right? I'm gonna let it snow. Actually, before that, I feel like I want to just a little bit more. Okay, there we go. When I Cut the bookmarks. Let me just show you that here. Is I used um, an exacto knife and I put it on a healing mat, you know, so I could measure it exactly. They're all one and a half inches by eight. So I was I tried tearing them with a ruler, which I usually do because I wanted a deckle edge, but they just it just bent up that paper way too much. So I decided to make it a little bit more precise and then so I just cut each one and then I just took, I have two shades. You could use a ribbon if you wanted. I think a ribbon would be really pretty, which I may do some with a ribbon. Um, but then I took two shades of blue and put them together. So I have a light blue and a dark blue. And then I used my hole punch and I punched a hole in it. So they're all kind of equidistance. And then I will just push this through the hole. And it's like a little tassel. I just pull it through like so. And then you can write something on the back. And I think they came out really pretty. I think I have a book somewhere here. Here's my book. There we go. That makes a really pretty bookmark. All right. And then the last thing I want to show you with my big mess here, let's put that aside, is just how I did this. Here we go. All right. So all I did was we're going to make one for my mom. Okay. 
So I just took a regular pencil and I didn't want to get too close to this. A few of them I did. And then I just wrote in my handwriting. Okay. And then I just start down here at the bottom. And this is a great one when you're watching TV. And I did, I, and I'm not an embroidery expert. So some of you maybe like start cringing when you see how I do this, but <laughs> this is the Renee way. Okay, so I'm just going to backstitch. And I really enjoy doing this, especially the, you know, the people who I'm giving gifts to and they can just keep it, a little tag. Sometimes you like just seeing your name and writing. It makes you feel special. This would be nice for a teacher too. So that's all you do, just kind of backstitch. And if you wanna get fancy, you can add some little snowflakes. I did experiment with a little piece of muslin. Let me show you, but it was a little, I made this one too and I put some snowflakes, but it just kind of got wrinkled up a little bit. I had a little piece. So it might be really pretty to have that delicate um, fabric too. Sometimes just experimenting to figure out what it is you're trying to do is the only way to figure it out. Okay, so that's how I made my tag. And then what I did was I just stitched in this and I tied a knot. And so now I can attach it to my gift, like so. I'll put this here and I'll finish that tonight. All right, so let's see what we have. And we have our bookmarks. Oh, one last thing, I almost forgot. I wanted to do this. <clears throat> so when your tags dry, you know, we had our, I have my little box of greens and you can take one and add it. And I have some, I'm just gonna try matte medium and see. I'm just gonna put a little blob down and Hopefully, it maybe the yes paste might work better or some mod pod, mod podge, but I'm gonna put that on there. So now it just adds one more element to it. So let's see what I made here. Okay, here we go. It's all coming together, the holiday cheer and what we made last week. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I'm excited to see what you make. I love seeing it. And I loved all the landscapes that everyone made last week and made gifts out of. It was so fun to see that. So thank you for sharing that with me. And um, if you have any questions about it, um, oh, and I do want to talk to you about one more thing. So anyway, this is all the tags and the bookmark. And I... I got these, I think I told you I got these from Amazon, so just put in the search tags with string and it comes in. All right, here we go. Let's switch around. Okay, great. So enjoy your weekend. Thank you for being here. I love hanging out with you guys and this was so much fun for me and I hope you enjoyed it and I can't wait to see what you create. So thanks, I'll see you next week.